And they won't even shake my hand. They'll pull it back. They'll be like, I could take your girl. I'm like, you can't say that in real life. <laughs> you can say that in a song, sure, but you can't say that to my face. You're being rude, sir. That is rude. Because <laughs> I, I get where this guy's coming from. He's like probably 21 or something, but he's still on that phase as a guy where like you think getting a good woman in your life it's about having the right amount of objects, you know? Because when he's like, oh, I could take your girl, what he's really saying is like, oh, I make more money than you. I drive a better car than you. I could buy her drinks all night. But I've been with my girl for a long time. I don't think you have any idea how deep I'm in on this. <laughs> I know my girlfriend's favorite vinaigrette, and I've called restaurants to make sure they have it. <laughs> Step into my house. I will blow you away. April 26th and 27th, comedian Don Paré will be headlining Yuck Yucks in Burlington and recording an album. Here to chat about it is the man himself, Don Paré. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me uh, and uh, getting all the Halton region uh, pumped for my album. <laughs> I mean, it's like I'm joking about Halton region, but I chose Yucks Burlington because that's a great club, great audiences, uh, low ceilings, high energy. They're smart. They're still kind of small town a little bit with their uh their irreverence but uh they're not uh they're not small town in a way that they're not clever so you can pull off some pretty good wide spanning jokes in that club and i love it there well listen for those that haven't seen you perform before we get to the album describe don Perret's style of stand-up comedy for me uh i'm like a bit of uh, ton and i mean it's so easy to say i'm funny i'm hilarious i am but uh i'll take a I'll take a longer walk to get to a punchline than most. I'll kind of make it worth your while and proceed it with a lot of jokes on the way there. Uh, I said a reverend about the audiences and me too. I'm just kind of lean in. Sometimes I'll say something that I know I'll get a negative reaction just to spin it on its head uh, and use that energy, get a bigger laugh. And sometimes like, I don't like to use the, uh, the, the phrase like, you know, speaking truth to power or something like that. But I, I, I do like to just call out some of the silly things that we do and the uh, odd things that we do to each other and mock them and mock, mock basically all of us as human beings. And, uh, and then there's the dick joke or two in there too. <laughs> I love it. You just, I did not expect that, but that is what is to be expected from your act. Yeah. Now, here's the thing yeah. though, you've, you've been doing this, I mean, we're going on a couple decades now, right? That you've been on stage. Yeah, yeah. How, how has your comedy evolved over that time? Um, it used to be when I started, I was very much, uh, I was just a lot more abstract as an act, uh, just sort of taking it, like, just like two images and marrying them and trying to like make that work into a punchline. Um, sort of like maybe Zach Galifianakis kind of style when he was doing his comedy, it was very, uh, just imagery based. Um, uh, and then I grew up a bit, like, you know, it's, it's hard. I think, I think when you start getting, like, I'm starting to get some gray hairs and it's pretty hard to act like I don't understand the world, you know, like I'll watch, uh, I'll watch comedians who are kind of doing more of like an alternative style, but I'm like, come on, man, you have two kids. Like, you can't be like, what's the deal with pizza? Right. So I, uh, I basically have like evolved because I've grown, like I'm just getting older. My knees hurt when I run, you know? So that's basically your, your comedy kind of changes to more, uh, I don't know, uh, gripes with the world than anything. I'm not like super negative, but I'm very sarcastic and that kind of thing, but it's more story based. It's longer format and it's uh, less set up punch. Uh, not that anyone uh, you know, is bad for doing setup and punchline stuff, but I, that's just not uh, where I do anymore. I've kind of grown all the way through that, you know, and I, and to be honest, I was going to record an album before COVID hit, uh, because all the jokes I was doing at that time, they're like feeling, um, rusty and dated to me now. And sort of like, you know, I'd grown to the point now, it kind of feels like you're putting on pants that are too small where you're like, I gotta, I gotta get this out before I, I hate saying it or people like are odd oddly looking at you because you're doing jokes about you know women in the club or something but you're married like what is what is this you're not doing dating material when you're like i have a ring on you know so uh and then anyway covid hit and i i basically couldn't do that album and i stopped doing those jokes because they just I, had a, I lost connection to them and now i'm like you know to answer your question what kind of comedian am i now i'm like it's kind of always like 
uh, where I am in my life at that point. And now I'm sort of, I've, I've got, uh, you know, a whole other set of material that I'm now, oh, it's getting dated and it's moving on. So I'm going to put the album out and then you'll see me do another evolution, but it'll probably be always based on what's in front of me and what's in front of all of us. You know, we can't do COVID jokes anymore. <laughs> no one cares, but you know, you can get all that stuff out of you. Now you are recording an album, as you mentioned. Uh, how does that particular set that you are putting out there and doing in Burlington differ from any other night? How is the planning different? Um, for that one, like Burlington, I think I chose it's sort of a uniquely um, situated because it, it is a club, but it does feel a little bit like a road gig, just mildly like that, like some smaller town folks. So you can... Um, get a lot of that appreciative energy. They, they, they really just sort of, uh, they like that you're there and they appreciate that you've come, you know? Uh, whereas in other cases, you're like, you know, if you go to a comedy club, maybe even downtown uh, Yuck Yucks, which is a great club, but it there's more of a uh, prove it to me attitude, you know? It's like the, 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 the energy shifts. So there's a lot more of a, um, a, a me versus them kind of energy than when Burlington, I kind of, you get to feel that line of where you end and they begin. You sort of really get intimate with them. And that that's, you should play it differently because you're closer to them. Uh, even in the setup of that room, there's not like as much of a raised stage and they're much more close to you. You can reach out and touch their table kind of thing. Whereas other places you're so far removed, you got to get really big with the energy and you sort of have to just uh, like, in some cases you have a spotlight in your face. You can't even see the audience. You're just sort of performing it blind, you know, but in this one, I can see them. I can really cater to what's going on in the room. So, I mean, you know, basically it's, it's set up in such a way that I can really respond to them and they can respond to me and other clubs are not always set up that way. They're kind of set up as more of a broadcast medium as opposed to a back and forth. Well, it will be an interactive experience, both April 26th and 27th. Yuck Yucks Burlington. Dom Prey will be there recording his album that night. Thanks for doing this today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, come on out, Halton Region. It'd be a good time.